Hello, it's Jason Payne for Cool Banker Dan Harper Realtors. Once again, we got Miss Jen Bailey from Legacy Mutual, and she's got some amazing pro tips from a lender. Uh, today's top topic is very uh, timely because everyone's kind of waiting on pins and needles to figure out what the Fed is going to do with interest rates so they can figure out, are you going to buy in 2024 or do you want to keep waiting to maybe 2025? So, yeah, with that, let me bring in Ms. Jen Bailey here. And, uh, yeah, what you got for us today? Thanks for having me on again, Jason. Well, the Fed met this week on Wednesday, and a lot of interesting news came out of it. So what the Fed did is they did not increase or decrease interest rates. They just kept the federal funds rate the same. But it was their predictions that were so beneficial to hear, and the market responded positively. Basically, they're going to be starting to cut rates soon, and we're going to get into why and how and what you know the predictions likely are going to be. So they when they release the, the projections for this year, they don't do this at every Fed meeting, but they did it at the meeting on Wednesday, and they released what they're projecting to do. They said they're going to do three rate cuts this year, and what's interesting is that many economists were expecting them to revise it down to only two rate cuts. They started out saying it'll be four. Some thought six. Penciled in four. Penciled in four. They, then uh, economists thought, oh, they're going to drop it down to two because of the way the economy is right now. But they actually said, no, we're going to do three rate cuts this year. So they have six more meetings happening throughout the rest of this year. The next one, they have one in May, June, July, and then six total throughout the rest of the year, right? And they're basically, the market is showing that they're more optimistic that they're going to start cutting rates sooner rather than later. So if you think about timing and you're trying to predict, because I know we're all trying to do our best to predict to help our buyers understand when it makes sense to buy, right? Well, May is likely going to be too soon for a rate cut. They meet again in May. But if you think about it, there's only about five weeks left until their next meeting. There's not enough economic reports coming out between now and then likely to be able to result in a rate cut. So I don't think May is going to happen. Now, I think it'll either be June or July. I'm leaning towards July as the first Fed rate cut. Could be June. But June or July most likely is when we're going to see this, the first rate cut because that's far enough before the election, but late enough to have some more economic reports come out to help them justify their decision to, to drop it. But here's what's really weird, Jason. Oh, don't do, do, at, do say. I like the strange stuff. So here's what's very strange. Um, they, you know, the economic reports that drive the Fed decision on what they're going to do with interest rates came out showing they shouldn't drop rates at all. In fact, they should increase rates. So here's what's interesting. The economic reports came out saying that GDP is going to be doing really well or is doing better than expected. Unemployment is doing better than expected and inflation is doing worse. So with those economic reports, they should be increasing interest rates or leaving them the same. But instead, pause, pause yeah. real quick. when yeah. you say doing better than accept, expected, that means for viewers, uh, if you're wanting rate cuts, you want GDP to be going down. You want the economy to be failing. You want the economy to be failing and collapsing. But right. when she said inflation's doing better uh, or worse than expected. That means it's not going down fast enough. People are still buying. They're still consuming. And right. that's what's driving all of this. Sorry, sorry to cut you off there. Yeah, No, that was a good interruption because that's important for people to understand. When the economy is doing bad, the Fed usually drops rates. When the economy is doing well, they usually increase rates or keep them the same. While all the economic reports are showing our economy is strong and doing great, and we're not doing good on inflation. They want to get inflation down. However, they said they're going to do these rate cuts and they didn't give a reason, but we all know the reason is because it's an election year. So because it's an election year, they're going to need to drop rates. So that seems to be why they're still predicting three rate cuts this year. So timing wise, you know, it's hard to say exactly when, I think June or July, um, but they projected they will cut the federal funds rate this year from about 5.5% to 4.75% this year. Now, the important thing for buyers to remember is the federal funds rate is not the mortgage interest rate they'll have. It's usually a few percent higher, but that's still really good news to go down about a little less than 1% throughout this year. That could help a lot of buyers qualify that didn't previously. Yeah, I think and I've been telling people when they ask me, things are slower right now. Pick it up a little bit. But my prediction is, uh, as far as for Texas, 
if we get down to like 5.8%, uh, I think the floodgates are going to open back up and people yeah. are going to start gobbling up homes again because people have now been conditioned that, oh my gosh, now 5% is a great rate because we've been dealing with six and a half, seven, seven and a half percent for so long. So yeah. uh, it, it, it's a tough call from trying to give buyers advice because it's like, yeah, if you wait, then more buyers are going to start coming in and that's going to push prices up. So mm -hmm. it's like, or do you buy now and prices might go down a little bit for a little while, but, and, or, and just hope that rates drop and then you can refinance later, which make sure you call Miss Jen Bailey. If you want to refinance your house, if you already did purchase, but yeah, it, it's a tough question to ask. And then if you're looking at, national numbers, they're going to be a lot more of a roller coaster than Texas is because Texas is still a place people are moving to versus away from. So yeah, it's always tough to predict, but uh, when you're getting a house built, I've worked with a lot of new construction. When do they typically lock in that interest rate? Usually as soon as 60 days before closing. So if you're building, you're in a great position because most likely by the time the house is done, rates will be better, either the same or better, not worse, right? No one's expecting interest rates to get higher. So if you're building and your rate is lock is farther out, great. So builders can do 30, 45 day and 60 day rate locks. Some will do a 90 day rate lock. I would say the shorter the rate lock, the better. Get it closer to when the house is almost done. Have a better interest rate up because we're expecting rates to improve rather than get worse. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, any other things going on in the market? Um, I know uh, I can always talk about your mortgage news daily. This is not Jennifer's app. This is something she discovered and started using, and it's open to the public to edu uh, educate yourself on what's going on in the market. And uh, that's why we do this podcast, because we want people to be as educated as possible about what's going on in the world around them so they make the best decision available. Yeah, one of my, that is one of my favorite websites, mortgagenewsdaily.com. And you scroll down to the bottom and it shows you the interest rates for all the loan types. And they're pretty accurate compared to a lot of the other online websites that show interest rates. It's one of my favorites. So be your own source, educate yourself, go to this website, do your own research, listen to Jason's podcast. We are here to help. <laughs> and call Miss Jen Bailey with Legacy Mutual because she's got a lot more knowledge than I do. That's for sure. <clears throat> All right. Uh, you got anything else for us today? No, that's it. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming on today and thanks for sharing your knowledge. All right. Take care now. Oh, don't forget hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and of course, share these videos with your friends and family. All right. Take care now.